Hello, this is Clint Halstead, and this is a continuation of Introduction to Microprocessors, and we're talking on we're talking about Chapter Three, which is about parallel ports, clocks, and power supplies. We're going to finish out Section uh, 3.2.2 through Section 3.3. .3. So um, we'll be talking about logic, and uh, we'll be talking about switches and LEDs. <coughs> So, from a logic perspective, you can think of a uh, logic level signal, logic 1 or logic 0, as being similar to the diagram shown on the screen, um, having a V8, VLH, and a VLL, uh, where VLH can be represented uh, as a number written on the data sheet. Uh, for example, VLH could be five volts. VLL could be zero volts. And you can think of it as having uh, these buffers. All these buffers have uh, two states, logic one and zero, and they also have uh, a resistance, a series of resistance. So they have a voltage associated with them and a resistance. So when the signal is high, you can think of it as having, uh, for example, five volts in series with a resistor, which may be a 1K resistor, 1.1K resistor uh, depends on what the data sheet says, so we have to look on the data sheet and, and see what, what the output resistance is of the buffer. Okay, so, so this would be the output resistance. It's going to have an output resistance for the high and the low. Um, now, internally, what, what that resistance really comes from is it comes from the MOSFET transistors. If you look at the, if you look at the design of the of the inverter. Uh, the actual design is, is something similar to this. So you have two MOSFETs stacked together. Okay, so this is an inverter. So really the output resistance is uh, R out here. So this switch, uh, when this is low, this PMOS transistor will be on. So um, 5 volts will be connected uh, to the output here. And conversely, when this signal is a 1, uh, this transistor is off and this NMOS on the bottom is, is on. So the PMOS is off uh, in this case. So when this is a 1, the PMOS is off and the NMOS is on, which means that the output resistance is just going to be the, the RDS on of the NMOS transistor. Okay? So that's where the output resistance comes from. Um, this diagram here is, is representing uh, <coughs> a logic. The switch is in this position when output is logic one. Okay, switch is in this position when it's logic zero. So this is just kind of a simple model for looking at uh, output resistance. Okay. Now we're going to talk about a little bit about switches. There's several different ways to implement a uh, a mechanical switch for inputting values into your processor. One way is to simply have a double pole, a single pole double throw switch. So this is a single pole double throw, which is, is acronymed SPDT. Okay, SPDT. Um, so that means that it has. Uh, one pole here, but it, you can throw it, into, throw it into two different positions. So that's represented by the two bubbles here. So you can throw this, this switch into two different positions. But only the single pole just means that uh, only one connection at a time. So you're either connected here or he you're either connected on the upper side or the lower side, but you, you're not connected on both. So it's single pole. But you can throw it in two different positions. So one way would be to um, use a single pole double throw uh, in this manner you could connect it directly to, to VDD your V source so this could be your 5 volt supply so when it's in the upper position you're connected to 5 volts okay and then your buffer here will be 5 volts or when you're connected to the lower position here this is 0 volts so you'll have 0 volts so that's one way now a more common way would be to do to use a simple switch like a single pole single throw.
Okay, acronym S P S T. Okay, so that that represents the switch here with uh, one pole and one throw position. So when it's in that position, it's not thrown in any position. When it's down, it's thrown into the the on uh, the connected position. So when the switch is in the up position, okay, then what what voltage are you going to get on VN? Well, you're going to get the five volts here, or 3.3 .3 or 1.8, whatever. But in this case, let's just say that VS is equal to five volts. Then this is going to be five volts through this resistor, which means it's going to charge this line up to five volts. Okay. Now, when we connect, when we throw the switch into the the bottom position, then it's going to connect this side of the resistor straight to ground, so zero volts. So you're going to have some current flowing through the resistor to ground, um, and it's going to be, you know, of course, given by Ohm's law, I is equal to V over R. So you don't want to have too much current flowing through here. You want to set the resistor so that you don't burn too much current. But you want, so you want the the resistor to be big so you don't burn too much current. But you want it to be low enough to where you don't have too much of a time constant because the, uh, the the rise time here is going to be dependent upon the parasitic capacitance of the input uh, times the resistor value. So the, the time constant tau is equal to R C. So resistor times the capacitor. So you may have maybe uh, it depends. You may have, you know, 10 picofarads, or you may have one nanofarad, or 10 nanofarads, depending on whether it's an, a, a discrete circuit or an internal circuit. So anyway, you're going to have that time constant. So you want your R to be small uh, to minimize the time constant. So really, typically about 1k or 100k, 10k, something right there. Anyway, anywhere between maybe 1k and 100k would be a good resistor value. Now, another way to do this would be um, to, instead of having a pull-up, this is called a pull-up resistor, pull-up, we can have a pull-down, PD, pull-down resistor. So now, the, the line is typically pulled down, and then the switch will pull it up, okay? But the resistor is pulling it down. So that's an alternative way. So the way this one work was when the switch is in the up position, then you're going to get zero volts on the input and of course zero volts on the output. Now when the switch is in the down position, it's going to be, assuming this is five volts, then this uh, VN will be connected to five volts and you get five volts on the output. So that's the uh, three different switch uh, combinations there. Now, so we talked about some user inter inputs interfaces. So this would be like a keypad. Switches would be like a keypad or individual switches for like, you know, you'd have a switch for up, a switch for down, left, right, if you're doing some sort of a display controller or something. Now, if you if you want to have an output to a display, this is for your uh, interface for your eyes, so you can see the status of the microprocessor, whether this LED is blinking, or whether you have a liquid crystal display or LCD or something like that. Um, but the simplest thing is just to have an LED, maybe a power LED or a status LED, either blinking or something like that. For example, you know, a charging light. A charging light typically would blink if it's charging, it'd be all the way on if you have, uh, if it's all fully charged, something like that. Or just a simple power switch. Okay, so the way the LEDs work, the LEDs are made out of gallium arsenide, so they, they have a forward voltage that's quite a bit higher than a typical diode. So a typical diode a uh, silicon dial is going to have a, a drop of about, you know, 0.6 or 0.7 volts across it when it's conducting current. But an LED, uh, the symbol for an LED looks like this. It looks just like a diode except for you have this squiggly line that comes out of it, okay? So this is the LED symbol. It has a squiggly line coming out of it. Now the forward voltage for these are typically uh, more around, uh, you know, 1.7 to maybe 2.3, okay? Where the yellow is going to be higher. You can see here that from this chart that the, the red is going to have for, you know, from zero to 50 milliamps, it's going to go, it's going to be about, you know, at 50 milliamps, it's going to be about uh, 2.1. And then about 10 milliamps, it's going to be more like a little bit 1.9. Whereas the yellow for the same values is going to be more like 2 for 10 milliamps 
and then at 15 milliamps it's going to be more like 2.5. So depending on the color, the red ones are the most efficient, so those are the most common, so they use the less power. Uh, the ones that have the highest voltage drop use, le use the most power, so that means the yellow one, the green ones, are going to use the most power. Um, how do you connect the LEDs? Um, here the LEDs, uh, the way you connect it is you can connect it either, assuming this is your microprocessor right here, okay, this is your microprocessor, and this is maybe port port A pin, uh, so let's just call this a pin on your microprocessor. You need to have a current limit resistor, that's the most important thing, always have to have a resistor. Now the way you set the resistor is you, de you de figure out how much voltage is going to be across it, so, for example, if this is 5 volts, if you have 2 volts across the diode, if this is a 2-volt uh, diode, like a red one or something like that, then the current is going to be, I is going to be equal to V over R. Okay? The V in this case is 5 minus 2, because you have 2 volts here, you have 5 here, so it's going to be 5 minus 2, which is going to be 3 over R. So it could be 1K, that would give you 3 milliamps. So that's how you calculate. You typically want your current to be within this chart here. You know, I want it to be like one milliamp minimum, I would say. One milliamp minimum uh, to about, you know, 10 milliamps. Maybe even 20. But uh, remember, this is wasting current, so you don't want to have too much. An alternative way, now sometimes your, your uh, microprocessor can sink and source the same amount of current. So you can Sink, this is called sinking current. This is called sourcing current. I'm sorry, I got that backwards. This is called sourcing current. Okay, so when current comes out of the microprocessor into the LED, it's called you're sourcing your current. You're, you're provi providing a source. When you're sinking current, um, and this is an example of sinking current. So the current is actually going to be coming from your, your supply through the resistor, I don't know why this arrow is in the wrong direction because that's wrong, it's going to be coming from the 5 volts through the resistor, through the LED, and then through the chip, and it's going to be going to ground through the chip. So that's called sinking. So we're going to be sinking current. Okay? So sometimes if you look on the data sheet, you can, the microprocessor, now this is the microprocessor, we're just going to, you know, this, we're pretending like this is the microprocessor. And over here, this is the microprocessor. So, so this is the pick here, and this is your external circuit. And over here, this is your pick, right here, and this is your external circuit. So, um, in this case, sometimes your microprocessor can sink more than it can store. So, sometimes it's appropriate to to connect uh, the resistor to the plus 5 and then the diode here. And it doesn't really matter the order here. This, this order doesn't matter. You can put the diode here um, and put the resistor down here. It doesn't really matter. But what the difference is, is here is your, these, two resistor, these two devices together, the resistor and the diode, are connected to plus 5. That's the difference. Over here, the resistor and the diode combination are connected to ground. Okay? So that's the main difference. Over here, this combination is connected to 5 volts, okay? So this is called uh, sinking, this one's called sourcing. So two different types there. Okay, so the next section uh, we're going to be talking about the 16F84 parallel ports. So for this section we're done. Thanks a lot.